This is part seven of a tutorial series on how to create an airplane in Plane Maker, and we'll take it into X Plane Flight Simulator now to test fly it. There's just one more thing I need to do before we can actually take it up in the air, and that is I have to go to Viewpoint and change the cockpit type to Airliner. Basically, what this does is it loads up a PNG file, and if you go to Panel, you get the uh, background that's needed to actually drag the instruments in here. Uh, so, for example, we can drag the instruments in here for uh, the Avidine, and you can also resize it. We'll get to this the detail of, of this process later on, but here you can make it 1.3 um, size. We'll leave it at that. We'll just have one instrument in here for now. That's all we need. Uh, We'll save it and I'll see you in the simulator. I have a shortcut here for X-Plane and while it loads up I'll just cut away the, the loading time because you don't have to watch this progress bar go across the screen. Okay, here we are. Uh, I don't have my disk inside the drive, my X-Plane 9 disk. I just wanted to show you what happens when you don't have, when you only own the demo version of it. You get a warning here that says you're only allowed to fly for 10 minutes and your joystick input will be ignored after 10 minutes. Okay, so I go understood. The other thing I'll probably get right away is a pop-up menu that says, a pop-up window that warns me that I have set too many graphics options. Well, that's because I've, I'm screen capturing right now. These graphics settings are actually uh, fairly low. They're not too high. And I do that exactly because I'm screen capturing right now. So uh, the package here is a scenery package that I downloaded. It's of the Vancouver area. Uh, Vancouver International Airport. Uh, I used to live in Vancouver, so this is uh, very exciting for me to see the amount of detail that went into this. And you can find a lot of free stuff and also pay where uh, scenery packages and planes online. Okay, so let's try this thing out and see. You can also uh, do different different views, like the runway view is Shift 2, or the spot view, sorry, is Shift 2. And you can move it around with the arrow keys, move it up and down and zoom in and out with the plus and minus keys. So the first thing let's do is check the control surfaces. I'll go to A, press A for the chase view, and let's check the elevators. Yep, we got some good elevator response there. Let's check the rudder. Yeah, some good rudder response. Aileron. Yep. I haven't actually programmed the steering, the front wheel to steer yet, so we'll have to deal with that a little bit later. Just in case you're wondering, uh, there's a pop-up menu that comes up when you move your mouse to the top of your screen. And here, for example, if I have joystick and equipment selected, I can assign the axes to different joystick components, and it also allows me to calibrate it. For example, this roll here right now, it's not giving me enough roll authority. All I do is I click on it and click again, and then I can move the joystick back and forth, and it'll give me full roll authority. Uh, there's also stuff that you can set here for stability augmentation and the linearity of the of the joystick response. Here, here you can set all the buttons that you want to set on the joystick and you can program the buttons to pull in the landing gear for example or to do the flaps but I'm just gonna call out the keys that I'm pressing as I'm flying here. Okay so first thing I'll do is advance the throttle to full speed and release the brakes with B. There we go. Let's go sit down in the cockpit for a bit. I can scroll down and see the actual instrument that we just dragged in live. It's actually all moving and everything's ready to go. Uh, you can scroll down by hitting the down arrow key. And I'm going to go to outside view by hitting shift and backslash. I'm zoom, out a, zoom out a little bit and move the view to the top. And time to give it some up elevator. Look at that. I didn't even set the uh, the flaps. Okay, time to pull in the landing gear. So this plane is flying really, really nicely right out of the box. There's no trim I've had to do, no weight shifting, no center of gravity change. Basically, what we just did in these last six tutorials ended up working perfectly. Okay, let me fly a circuit try to land this plane before the 10 minutes are up. Okay. 
it's a pretty encouraging experience to actually see something that you created from scratch uh, work like this in, in the simulator. I think Austin Meyer, the creator of X Plane, did a wonderful job just making this whole simulator come alive and, uh, and make it work properly. So, in the simulator, there's a lot of options in terms of weather and um, and day and night and stuff like that. I don't have this plane colored or textured yet at all. That's what we're going to do in the next couple of tutorials. But one thing to note about X Plane, I mentioned it in other videos that I posted on YouTube. But X-Plane is very accurate when it comes to aerodynamic calculation. It uses uh, blade element theory and cuts up the plane. If you want to see the physics acting on the plane while it's flying, you hit the forward slash or the question mark button, and the, you can hit it several times, and you'll see different modes of physics representation. And it's actually really, uh, sometimes you can really uh, get an enlightening perspective on where the lift is happening, where the drag is happening, and all that stuff. So um, you can also hit O, and O will draw the path of the plane for you in 3D as well. There's different uh, different modes of that as well. So I think it's time to turn the plane around and come in for a landing. That's a pretty steep. Turn. I'm going to deactivate those visuals and get myself behind the plane and try and come in for a landing here. I'll try to hit that same runway that we had on the way up and I'll extend the landing gear now. It's all about throttle management now. And time to pull out the flaps. I hit the 2 button to pull out the flaps. And each time I press the 2 button, it lowers itself by one detent. Wow, I'm getting a lot of lift from these flaps. Notice how I'm pushing the elevator way down. Okay, I'm probably coming in a little too hot. There's too much airspeed. So I'll have to hit the spoilers. And you open up the spoilers with the 4 button. Hmm. That seems to push the plane down nicely. So there's two spoiler detents, and uh, I think there's four flap detents in this plane. So I'm going to lower the flaps a little more before we come in. Okay, the flaps are extended all the way, and I'm still, I've still got throttle on its lowest setting. And I think I'll be fine with that. I'm coming in nice and, nice and easy. Lift up the nose just a tiny bit before touching down. There we go. That was a very good landing. And then I hit the B button for brakes, and you see how the spoilers also extend some more after the plane has touched down. So overall, this plane is very flyable, very usable. And uh, what we'll do in the next couple of tutorials is just to work on the cockpit a little bit more, populate, populate the cockpit with all the instruments we need, and also go ahead and start painting the plane in Photoshop. I'll show you how to export the geometry of the plane so you can uh, paint it nicely with different paint schemes from different airliners and whatever. So that was it. That's our test flight. Hope to see you around for the rest of the tutorials.